اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و اعتصم بحبل اللہ جمیع ولا تفرقو صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The verse which I have recited in the beginning is basically from Surat Al-Baqarah. And if you read after 103, 4, Allah says that, وَعَتَّسِمُ بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold the rope of Allah all together and don't get divided among yourselves this verse basically the cornerstone is the cornerstone for entire muslim ummah do not go into differences but hold the rope of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't get divided now we can see after division diversification what we have become you are different i am different we read one kalima of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but our ideologies are different our thinking are different thinkings this uh, thought process is different our inclinations are different objectives goals all are varied why what happened to us why can't we speak one thing under one umbrella what is holding us back what is there this lecture of mine inshallah open the eyes of muslims that what happens when you are divided and what happens when you are united amalgamation balkanization you see for the past 300 years humanity has been seeking for social justice from east to west and west to east but they couldn't find it why because the supreme knowledge divine knowledge revealed knowledge has not been looked upon if we follow the divine guidance from the holy quran all things are solved but unfortunately we are not doing that allah says in the quran do not get divided among yourselves there is a message to us imagine how many muslims are living in the world around 2 billion roughly who are filling the census forms and even practicing lumped up together 1.9 or 2 billion muslim in the world do we have any sayings do we have any standings do we have any morality in us you see if you lose morality it becomes rascality you have to have morality in you so you can deliver the message to the rest of the world why allah has chosen us allah chose you know this is the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yastabdil qaumin ghairukum thumma la yakunu amthalukum you see russia right now same 1262 siege of baghdad these mongols they attacked and they captured muslims uh, they say 600000 or more than that muslims were butchered and killed massacre dramatic enough we don't know the exact rate but Jangesh Khan with his army he came and attacked muslim lands and then what happened nobody was there four families of this generation mongols they spread rest of the world turke temur he went to india india ruled for mughal empire turke usmani went to turkey kustantunia then turke seljuki went to egypt and turke safavid went to iran all these people spread rest of the whole world Islam why because Allah changed their hearts and they didn't do anything that like like uh, the other people didn't do anything to convert or revert them Allah changed their hearts and then they proselytized the word of God and they made the biggest empire in the muslim history who did it 
يستبدل قوم غيركم ثم لا يكون امثالكم سوره محمد chapter 47 last verse allah says oh muslim if you do your work niggardly i will substitute with the other nation and that nation will be never like you either they will be better than you or they will be worse than you but they will not they will not be like you do you want this destination do you want that allah replace us with russia who knows allah changed the hearts of the whole russian people and they become the muslims and we all are doomed we have to unite ourselves see our position what's happening to us confusion dichotomy ambivalence confusion cognitive dissonance we don't know where we have to go what is our goal ultimate goal we don't know we are on the ship which is we embark on the ship without a sailor without a course and it is time for us to wake up to do something as a muslim ummah how long we going to see all these brutalities against islam how long what thing going to move us you want god to come down on this earth and talk to you like christians they claimed god gave down on this earth what did he do nothing you said that he just came for to kill himself astaghfirullah what you want what muslims want the god comes down and then he tells one every one nasir mansur and ahmad what to do at least proselytize the message of islam tell to the west that this muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the most beloved personality for us do not blaspheme do not carry kecha talk to them to the west do not say a single word against our nabi it hurts us we won't tolerate anything and allah tells you not to tolerate in surah tauba chapter 9 verse 24 when kana abakum wa abnaakum wa khana ikhwanukum allah says that whatever these relations you have allah says these relations amongst them your fathers your mothers your uh, soul mates spouses your brothers and sisters your kins and cousins uncles aunts and this takhshawna kasadaha and this kasad that the loss of your businesses you were indulged in it and your living standards where you're living and all these things if you love more than allah and his rasul and you don't strive and struggle for his cause fatarabbasu dan wait hatta yati allah bi amri wait for the wrath of allah which is coming on you wallahu la yahdil qaum al fasikin and indeed allah does not guide the people who are fasiqun do you want this as your destination do you want that the people should do like this to you we have to unite ourselves prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that muslims should be united as ummah if one person when one body is in pain you should also feel it one part of this all body all ummah is a body and you have to act like that unfortunately we have divided ourselves into different norms the cultures we talk about cultures the cultures are more important than islamic values haves and have nots do's and don'ts these are all a part culture is more important than all these things why what is putting us behind why can't we become one remove our raje and marju matters remove our small pivotal sorry small trivial matters we will discuss later why don't we make one system islamic system islamic system which was laid by the blueprint of four guided caliphates what is the problem with us why can't we talk like that it is for us to do this had it been for us to make one ummah we wouldn't have been you know sacrificing like this gold is not in our control paper currency is not in our control look at pakistan what's happening to our country we don't have any say we don't have any rights of associations we can't speak anything and we claim that we have we are a democratic country islamic republic of pakistan is it what the republic of islamic uh, system in medina or in in, uh, in arabia those days when umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu anhu has been asked 
or could be asked that where did you get this button from, then who are the current leaders? That they are think that they are superior than superior than Umar ibn al-Khattab. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if any Nabi, if there was a chance of any Nabi who, be, who would be coming after me, that was Umar. But Ana Khatam al Nabijin, Ana Muhammad, Ana Ahmad, La Nabiya Badi. But this prophethood has been finished. I am the last of the prophets. No prophet is coming after me. Ana Ahmad and Ana Muhammad. And no prophet is coming after me. Otherwise, God have, would have chosen Umar ibn al Khattab. Then that guy who has so many sublime attributes. That guy could be asked by a normal Bedouin, the where did you get this button from? Then who these people are who are ruling us that we cannot question them? How? Nobody is superior. Nobody has absolute power except Allah. Chapter 17 verse 110. God says that all these association towards me about my son and bringing dominions and kings in front of me. God says nothing can side by me, stand beside me. So who is the ultimate per, uh, entity to be glorified? Allah says, then you have to glorify me alone, nobody else. This is the stature of Muslims, eschatology, Islamic eschatology. Unfortunately, we have become slaves. We have become slaves. Karte hai gulamo ko gulami par aza mand. And taawil hai masail ko banate hai. Bahana, kyunke inka masla ki ye hai ka naqis hai kitab ki sikhati nahi mu'min ko gulami ke tariq. Alama Iqbal says beautifully that karte hai gulamo ko gulami par aza mand. They themselves are slaves. And then they make other people, they persuade other people to become like slaves. Because in ka maslak, their attitude, their creed has become like a slavish, like a slave. Their creed, their dogma is slavery. And tawil e masail ko banate bana. And then they blame the time factor, circumstances. You know, circumstances are not supporting us. So we have to beg. We have to become slaves because circumstances are not supporting us. And khud ko nahi badal they don't, they don't change themselves. Quran ko badal dete and they want to manipulate Quran. They remove because Quran does not allow you to become a slave. So remove that book. We do not need that book. This is what you want. This is what we are becoming. Pakistan. I was there for 14 days in Pakistan. And I was shocked. People spending money, droves after droves. From where they are getting this money from, I don't know. They have a lot of money, these people. And you go anywhere, any place, restaurants, to different, different places. These people are spending money. I don't know from where they are getting this money. Business is there. Every idea and intelligentsia is there. But all with the mind of corruption, despotism, nepotism, cronyism. All these things are there too, dwelling in the blood of the nation. And little wonder why we are suffering. Because whatever you sow, that shall you reap. We are doing these things. We forgot what Allah told us to do. We should be united. We should become one. Why? Wow, what are we waiting for? We do not have to bow down to anyone except Allah. It's kufr. It's shirk. Sovereignty belongs to Allah alone. Absolute power goes to Allah alone. If you try to obey anyone, it is shirk. Without the shadow of doubt, all the authority, all sublime rules must be given to Allah alone. Nothing must be done to the repugnant of the Holy Quran and Sunnah. This is our objective resolution in the constitution of Pakistan. But unfortunately, we have evil doors, we have loopholes, we know how to manipulate, how to maneuver and do different, different tactics to, uh, you know, evade those rules. We are very perfect. Minds, intelligence, we intelligent, intelligent minds we have, intellectual minds we have, but for what? For hypocrisy. We are perfect for hypocrisy. 
I myself delivering many years these lectures, I'm telling my people that we have to unite. We have to unite, we have to become one, otherwise these disbelievers, they won't let you live, they won't let you uh, survive, they will put you into oxygen machine or any kind of machine where you keep, you know, uh, what you call, looking for your breath, that's all. They keep putting you that slowly and slowly you are dying, like you are on a ventilator, ventilator and your lungs are losing. This is what they have, want you to become. And this is, I'm telling to my Muslim brother, sister for more than nine years, that we cannot be slaves. If you read the Shahada of Rasulullah you can't be slave. If you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot be slave. You cannot fear from another person. He's the same creature like you. He, you cannot be feared. So speak truth whenever you speak truth. Do not get afraid. Death will come when the time will come. Otherwise, nobody is, be, nobody is able to take your death, to take your life. Remember that when the time of death will come, it will come. Khalid ibn Walid radiyatullah says that, I always wanted to get martyred. And there is no, not a single place on my body without any bruises. But here I am, dying on my deathbed, bedridden, and angel of death is coming to visit me anytime. He said, tell to the, these old cowards, if death is the only thing which you are afraid from these, these battles and all that, then Khalid ibn Walid would have been killed long time before. But here I am, I'm alive because death is in the hands of God Almighty alone. So don't get scared. Don't be spineless. Be strong and do the strive and struggle for the cause of Allah. Allah will open the doors of opportunities for you.